Hello and welcome back to our semantics course. This is lecture number two. In this lecture, we're going to discuss two main things. First one is the importance of semantics to language. And I'm sure you all know why this is a capital L. Second thing we're going to talk about is types of grammars and where semantics fits in. So you might recall in the previous lecture, we discussed the language family and what it is made out of. We said that it was made out of three things, first of which was sound, the second of which was form, and the third of which was meaning. In the last lecture, we asked if meaning was necessary. Can't language just work with just sound and form? All right, so I want you to take a look at this sentence. Okay. Colorless green ideas sleep furiously. Now, if you notice, this sentence is made up out of words, right? These sentences, the sentence is actually also made up out of um, the more primitive parts, which are the sounds. So you have the k sound, the l sound, okay? So we have the sounds, we have the syllables, we have the morphemes, right? So, for example, color plus morpheme less makes up colorless so we have the morphemes and then we have the words and on top of that we have phrases right so colorless green ideas is a noun phrase sleep is a verb and furiously is an adverb phrase all of this is a verb phrase and everything together is the sentence all this makes up the sentence so really it's missing nothing now when we said the word grammatical is important here and it's different from the word grammatical that you learned at school what we mean by grammatical here is that it contains everything a language should contain now what your school would have taught you is that the sentence does not violate any of the um syntactic um ideas right so are we violating any syntactic notions here no we have an np here that functions as a subject and then we have a verb and we have let's say a complement or an object okay so the sentence is in perfect condition when it comes to syntax it also looks great when it comes to morphology in the words nothing is wrong but one thing is missing the sentence still does not sound right even though this syntax is exactly perfect colorless green ideas sleep furiously the problem we come up here with is that colorless green ideas cannot sleep furiously ideas do not sleep right people sleep animate subjects can sleep so this is actually a sentence given by noam chomsky as evidence for the need for meaning or the need for semantics right okay and this is exactly why we needed meaning to be over here part of language or part of the grammar of a language now since we're talking about grammars okay let's make a distinction between two types of grammars so the first type of grammar is called a prescriptive grammar. The second type is called a descriptive grammar. Why is it important to make a distinction between these two types of grammars? Well, because we are dealing with semantics and semantics is part of grammar. But what type of grammar is it a part of? Well, it could be part of both parts, but we need to make our um, intentions clear before we dive into studying semantics because studying semantics from a prescriptive grammar point of view differs a great deal from studying semantics from a descriptive point of view so what is the difference between these two grammars well basically from the name here a prescriptive grammar aims to prescribe what a grammar should look like a descriptive grammar describes what a grammar actually looks like okay so a prescriptive grammar attempts to give us what 
language should look like, regardless of whether speakers actually speak that way or not. A descriptive grammar, on the other hand, takes the way language is used and describes it as is. So let's see a little example here. In a case that I'm pretty sure probably happened with you uh, or someone you know, a student in class raises his or her hand and asks if they could go to the bathroom. So the student says, actually, can I go to the bathroom? To which the teacher would reply, I hope you can. Now this is meant to be a funny joke between the teacher and the student to help teach the student that can as a modal verb means something like ability. So the teacher hopes that the student has the ability to go to the bathroom. What the student should have asked was, may I go to the bathroom since may is a modal verb that means to allow or to give permission, right? Or to make a request. But now here's the tricky part. Do we actually use the sentence or the phrase, may I go to the bathroom? Actually, no. Most of us would naturally say, can I go to the bathroom? So here's where these two grammars differ. The prescriptive grammar would say, no, saying can I go to the bathroom is incorrect. What you should say is may I go. A descriptive grammar approaches the same issue and says okay this is how native speakers use the language. They say can I go to the bathroom and so they would take that as a starting point and suggest that maybe can can also mean to make a request and also mean ability all right so this is the starting point the, the starting point the native speaker the native speaker okay um and for the prescriptive grammar the starting point is just some things you see in grammar books one more difference you want to make between descriptive and prescriptive grammars is that a prescriptive grammar since it wants people to speak one way when they actually don't speak that way brings about a class distinction let's say so if you've ever heard of received pronunciation or queen's english this is the type of english that you find in grammar books because grammar books are basically prescriptive grammars they teach people how to speak in a certain way descriptive grammars look to all languages and all dialects as proper languages in ebonics or the dialect spoken by african americans a sentence like i ain't did nothing would be frowned upon by a prescriptive grammarian as a sentence that has no grammar at all right a sentence that is totally incorrect However, from a descriptive point of view, this sentence is just fine. Because descriptively, we take this to be the basis for creating a grammar for that particular dialect or language. And actually, in reality, we do find that there is great, there's a great deal of systematic uh, use of language here. This is not haphazard. This is not random. Okay, the way these speakers use it is in a very systematic way, just like any other dialect or any other language. So why are we talking about descriptive and prescriptive grammars? Well, in semantics, we actually have two approaches. We can look at the languages of the world and ask how are they different, right? But we can also look at the language of the world and ask how are they similar so which one are we dealing with well if you're dealing with a descriptive grammar so you're describing every single dialect and every single uh, language based on its own rules that means naturally at the end of the day you're going to want to ask how all these different languages are similar to one another what makes them similar 
Because if you know what makes them similar, then you know what is universal or universal to all humans. You know what is shared by all human languages. And that's the basic idea. Mm -hmm.